of Divi Chat, the now five after episode <laughs> of Divi Chat Weekly. Uh, today we're going to be talking about maintaining your mental health in uncertain times. Obviously, we've had a lot of stuff going on. We've got some special return guests, original host in the his house, Mr. SJ. And uh, yeah, let's go around and in, let's go around and introduce ourselves. We've got a full panel today, so let's so still exciting. start with the ladies first. Sarah. Hey guys, you should have waited till last because the coffee's still kicking in. <laughs> I'm Sarah Oates from Endure Web Studios. You can catch me at endure.com.au or Endure Web on the socials. And I am very tired today. I had one of those terrible sleeps. Plus, we're trying to, you know, toilet train my youngest. And, you know, we've got this alarm thing going off. And then you wake up and then you can't go back to sleep. So I think I need this episode like more than ever. <laughs> That's more me. More than ever. I'm yeah. so glad you're here, Sarah. She definitely needs this topic, it sounds like today. I think so. Uh, and a Steph? double coffee. Yeah. Hi, guys. I'm Stephanie Hudson with Focus WP, where we do uh, white label WordPress maintenance for busy digital agencies like you. And you can find me at uh, on the web at focuswp.co. And you can also find me in my Facebook group, Focus on Your, your Biz. Focus on Your Biz, where we talk about a lot of the stuff we talk about on Divi Chat, really, how to keep your little, your entrepreneurial journey going. And I know a lot of the peeps in the group and a lot of my colleagues were all <laughs> just at our wits end. And so this is a very, very timely topic. Awesome. We're so glad you're here, Stephanie. Thank you, David. And hey, we've got a returning original Divi Chat podcast host. What? Mr. S.J. James joining us all the way from the UK. Hello, S.J. Hello, everyone. How are we all? Um, yeah, okay, S.J. Man. James, for, for those of you that are newer to the community, I was the uh, the, the founder of Divi Space back in the day, and what? I now run a charity for mental health for veterans and service personnel of the UK Armed Forces. So very happy to be here. And it is so awesome to have you here. So, Thank you. all right, who wants who wants to go next? Corey, bottom row. What's going on? Yeah, I, I was planning on coming on today, and then I, I heard SJ was coming on, and I got super excited. My my Nashville party buddy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Corey Jenkins here, Aspen Grove Studios, Divi Space, coming at you from Prescott, Arizona. Excited to be here. Hope hope I got some awesome. valuable info. And as always, Corey, what happens in Nashville stays in Nashville. Yeah, always. We, yeah, we, won't, we won't get into that, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Tim. Everybody, Tim Streifler here. And uh, you can find me online at divilife.com, where I have my Divi plugins, child themes, and tutorials. WPgears.com, where I have a course with David, which I think he's up over this way i think Corey's. why do we always have to point you always do i don't because it makes it more fun and engaging <laughs> and interactive no, stuff especially for the audio only people <laughs> <laughs> and most um, of the people just listen yeah and then uh tim .com, my client services business but yeah excited to be here today excited to have sj back and uh yeah perfect topic here for for him uh, with his guy, experience. So our job today is to convince him to come back to us forever. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I actually <laughs> logged into my Elegant Themes account today for the first time in about a month. That was exciting. Wow. Awesome. Sorry, Tim. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, it's okay. You. I was done. I was done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I am David Blackman with Aspen Grove Studios, Divi Space, WPGears.com. And super excited to be here. Definitely a timely topic, you know, people being trapped in their house, coronavirus, got the whole world on lockdown, who the hell knows what's going on. Um, and it's great, like everybody said, to have SJ back. And it's perfect topic for him because you know what? He's doing something that he loves doing, he's passionate about, and he's helping a lot of people over there in the UK. So I'm glad you're here, brother. And, uh, and I've actually come down to my office. office. I've come down to my office to do it. 
because it's <laughs> better life. Oh. Here, so we're in the office. Yeah, awesome. right? and SJ get to do awesome. their interview. I mean, their inter introductions. What's that? Did Corey and SJ do introductions? Yeah. Did I miss them? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Found out. You were just like welcome mesmerized back. by Welcome, back Stephanie. <laughs> <Wow>. welcome <laughs> back, Stephanie. Wow. Welcome back, Stephanie. Wow. Stephanie's been been handling her craft beer biz today. So yeah, evidently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> might have been. Might have been I was gonna say, Sipping at the craft beer all so day. Huh? Wine 30. I think Stephanie's found a way that a lot of us have found to manage our mental health. Block it out. <laughs> oh, no, come on now. <laughs> so, you guys, before we start, I have a couple things. One is I wore my Good Vibes shirt, especially for this occasion, because I think that's important when you're talking mental health, is to have good vibes. That's what everybody says, that's right? right. Thoughts and prayers, they do it all. But really, uh, there's a lot of stuff that we can joke about and have fun talking about and encourage and upbuild one another, but just like disclaimer, disclaimer, none of us are doctors. We're gonna talk about a lot of tips that can get you out of a dark spot maybe, but sometimes you do need to go to a doctor and none of us even play one on TV, so. Actually, I've been meaning to tell you guys, I am a doctor. What? So, just kidding. Definitely not. I, my wife is a nurse practitioner, so then get well, that makes him. That makes you come. a doctor. That so makes me a doctor. Need some meds. <laughs> Call Tim. And and hook you up. I don't know if you guys have the same thing there, but if you're in Australia, you can call Lifeline, which is thirteen eleven fourteen. So just so you know. Yeah. So US is one eight hundred talk, and UK is the Samaritans. Same thing. So awesome. Yeah. yeah. Always good to know. Those are good. And what happens when you call those numbers? You can talk uh, they, to a professional. They all go directly to SJ. They, yeah, my, <laughs> my, my, my battery died. It got so busy. <laughs> well, I hear talk helps. Talk. It's not. It doesn't. It's not the same. As backwards, but you, you get the gist. No, it's it's facing right for us. Well, SJ's look, wall yeah, no. says talking helps. The wall in his office. Professional. Yeah. Right. Very yeah. prof it's profesh. I believe it also says it in Braille on the wall, as far as I think that's what that is, right? Those yellow dots. So interesting, really, when we painted that, all of those yellow dots are an individual that we've stopped committing suicide. Mm. Uh, that's awesome. That's very cool. Yeah. That's amazing. So at your what tell everybody what your foundation is it a is it a foundation yeah. charity? Yeah, so it's a, it's a charity called All Call Signs. So we, uh, so myself, I'm ex forces. I was in the UK Army, um, and uh, one of my friends about two years ago took his own life, and me and another friend that I served have decided that enough was enough. Let's get together. Let's create uh, uh, some sort of support organisation that can help prevent other people feeling like they haven't got anywhere to turn. Uh, that's, yeah, so that was almost two years ago now. Since then, we've helped uh, 140 people choose a different path rather than take their own life. So yeah, important stuff, very deep, maybe a bit deeper than your average Divi chat, but there we are. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Yeah. It is, yeah, and we're not all in the trenches of a, a war, which is obviously an entirely different situation, but a lot of people, you know, being an entrepreneur is a stressful thing. And especially if you've got a family and you've got, I mean, and right now, sorry, Jay. Owners, entrepreneurs, people with kids, you go to war every day, right? <laughs> every day is a battle. So yeah, everyone's got their own stuff that they're dealing with. Um, and I think we're all a little bit better now than we used to be at being a bit kinder to each other and understanding that, and making sure that we're there for each other, but we can always do a little bit more. So yeah. It's and I've been, like I've been thinking about like the situation a lot of people are in too. Like we work from home a lot, but what if you have to work from home all the time and you can't go anywhere else? And then, you know, I know, Sarah, you're dealing with having 
kids and a husband at home that aren't normally there underfoot and you've had to move your office to another space where you can't even find the cord for your microphone and things like that, you know? So <laughs> there's a lot of like weird scenarios. I mean, that one of the things that has shocked me about the coronavirus uh, after, what, what are we, four months in now, is that domestic violence has skyrocketed. If that doesn't show you that people are under stress, like that to me, it was just like, I, it never even occurred to me. And I thought, wow, what if you were yeah, child in a abuse home like that? And spousal yeah. abuse and that's scary, yeah. All of oh, that. Wow. Well, if you think like most people nine to five go to work and then after work, they might go and meet their friends for a few beers. And then on the weekends, they'll play football or they'll do whatever it is that they do. Um, we probably spend more time with our work colleagues than we do with our partners, at least outside of this group where a lot of us work from home. And then all of a sudden, all of that's gone and you're in yeah. <laughs> what is essentially a tiny, you know, in the grand scheme of things, is a tiny box of a place with the same people day in, day out. Um, uh, uh, you're going to leave this lockdown as a, a hunk, a chunk or a drunk and um, <laughs> there's going to be some... I have my Corona coat on. That's what I like to call it. Your I like, Corona coat? What does it mean? My Corona coat, my extra layer of fat thanks oh. to coronavirus. Uh, <laughs> it's my Corona I like coat. It. I just like, laid I it say, on. I, have like I say, three, I have like three coats on then. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> forget the forget the freshman 10. I got the Corona 19, the COVID 19. I mean, dang it, I messed up my own joke. <laughs> <laughs> edit, edit that well, out. We're going to edit that out in post. Yeah. 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 <laughs> No. Why don't why don't we talk about, you know, some of the things obviously everybody's been kind of trapped and stir crazy and and possibly maybe talk a little bit about how it's affected you individually and stuff, but what are some of the things that you guys are doing to maintain mental health, to stay cuz I'm like an extrovert, an extrovert who's like trapped yeah. by himself at home and I don't know, you know, most people think extroverts are just outgoing people and stuff and introverts are quiet and actually what it is is an extrovert you know they they get their energy and stuff from other people and introverts get it from themselves so me not having anyone to kind of replenish you know my levels is is uh it's been interesting to learn some things about myself and how i respond and react because i do work from home all the time and most of the time I'm by myself and stuff, but um, it is, I'd love to know, you know, what, well, you what are you are doing, doing, David? Anything. What are you doing to help? Well, I'm doing Zoom calls. <laughs> actually, <laughs> I, you know, it's interesting. I, I, I do I'm actually think David's counselor. Video, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I do think that because I am on so many calls throughout the day that it's very helpful for me i do get that you know connection from other human beings and stuff so um it's mostly work related but a lot of the work people have become really really good friends so we not only talk business we do talk personal stuff as well so for me that's one thing that's that's been helpful is connecting you know with other people on a video call it does Walking. help i have I have a similar personality type to David. I'm also an extrovert and I have been shocked at what a homebody I've become. And I, I think it's like, because I've just been in the house, I've just gotten kind of stuck. And it's like, I haven't even really wanted to go hang out with my friends. I've been very busy at work and trying to do a lot of things there too. So it's not like I'm in a, a crippling depression or anything, but I do feel that like, this is a weird version of me. And then I've had, um, yeah. Just Watch a couple. Oh no! There goes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, that was yeah, weird. We could... Oh, I never lost her. <laughs> oh, come on, Corey. Hear... Corey, oh, your you, earmuffs. <laughs> your earmuffs are in the uh, way. No, my my internet's uh, unstable for some reason. Oh. Right now. <laughs> your your Sorry, internet Steph, needs to you... call that helpline. It's it's unstable. <laughs> yeah, there's like uh, <laughs> strange. All right. Okay. Go on. Sorry about that. Anyway, that's all right. So um, I've had a couple times where there's been like someone stopped by to drop something off, or I took something to you know driveway. We've had a I've had a couple like driveway chats with friends where I've stood in a driveway and I've ended up standing there for like twenty or thirty minutes just talking and having a laugh. And I will get in my car and I'll be like, 
wow, I do miss people. Like it's amazing <laughs> the difference in how I feel. And I, it's not like, like normally I'd be like, oh, I can't wait to go somewhere. And it's not that I'm feeling that and maybe because it's a scary place outside and I'm so unsure of it, but any little interaction that I have had or a friend that forced me to get on a phone call and have like a, you know, a catch up and I, both, all of those things. So knowing your personality type and what is, it is that recharges you is super important, I think. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it's, it's two things. Um, and these are things that I, I have been doing just to cope with working from home, not necessarily coronavirus related, but, um, exercise and outdoors. And I do those at the same time. Um, and it's crazy the amount of people around the world in developed countries that have vitamin D deficiencies. Mm -hmm. And that like correlates really high with uh, mental health. And so uh, I'm, I'm sure SJ has, could, could talk about that. But um, so for me, just getting outside and getting sunshine and then like exercising at the same time, like is very rejuvenating and yeah, it doesn't like replace getting together with friends and, you know, hanging out and stuff. But, um, I find it very helpful for, to do on a, on a daily basis, like every single day. Yeah. For me, I mean, you know, when most of us are talking at uncertain times right now, mine actually came like before <laughs> coronavirus did. hit. I mean, I had. Last year, my mom had leukemia. She was battling leukemia. Uh, I had a baby born in December who was um, in the NICU and on life support and intubated. Went back into the hospital in March when actually all this COVID stuff in the United States started unfolding. And um, everything was such a whirlwind and, and so stressful that for me, being back home and like, if this is the worst thing right now is being locked in the house with my family, <laughs> then I'll take it, you know, yeah. but I I'm starting to get to that point now to where, you know, and I'm not a super outgoing person. I figure, you know, I I'm a friendly person. I care a lot about people, but I'm not like a, like a David or Stephanie who's out talking, talking to everybody. You know, I'm the kind of guy who's getting my hair cut. And I'm kind of like, okay, is, you know, I just cut my hair. Yeah. Um, sorry if my, if my hairdresser is watching, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so, you know, last year I, I, I did have my things that helped out a lot with, uh, with my, my mental health and stress levels. I was out hiking a lot, doing a lot of outdoor stuff. I really haven't had a chance to do that, uh, this year. We've been trying to take some camping trips as a family, but with a baby and stuff, getting up at 5.00 AM and, and, you know, hiking, <laughs> Uh, ha hasn't, hasn't really been feasible. So I'm honestly right now struggling with that aspect of it, but, um, you know, once everything settles down, it'll come. That's next. Uh, I guess it's me. Um, I, so. I, oh, Sarah. Yeah. I was working really hard on my mental health last, like towards the end of last year and the start of this year. And Corona's kind of like really got in the way of that, but so a few things I was doing was going for a walk every day. So I've mentioned a couple of times on this podcast, I have chronic fatigue syndrome, which means I can't actually exercise anymore. So I used to manage my mental health through running a lot. And then I wasn't allowed to run anymore. And it really impacted my mental health a lot. And I hadn't realized just how much running was supporting me in a lot of ways. Like obviously it was helping my, me physically, but it was really helping me mentally. Um, and I am an introvert. I know I may not seem like an introvert when you talk to me because I'm quite uh, loud and especially and by the end of an episode when you're I know, real fully sometimes ramped very up. opinionated. Yeah. But I need time alone to energize myself. And so working from home is perfect for me because I have to go do school pickups and stuff. So I see people. It's not like I'm alone all the time, but um, when coronavirus hit, it was really tricky because all of a sudden I was with people all the time. <laughs> and that was actually really challenging for me because um, I need time by myself to be able to kind of recharge and get some energy to kind of go on to the next thing. And I think sometimes because I use so much energy with people, it really ends up kind of draining me. So um, I was going for walks every day, kind of to finish my work day, to start the end of the day, I'd go for just a 15 minute really slow walk. So trying to disassociate it from exercise from my brain was really tricky initially, but over time I got better at. Um, I've been using an app called the Calm app, which is a um, meditation app. And um, I somehow picked up some lifetime access to it. It's been really helpful for me. They're like 10 minute guided meditations, they're not 
woo woo. They're like really easy to follow. Um, I've tried a number of different apps and I've found meditation really challenging to kind of do, but they have like this seven day beginner thing. And I actually end up just often going back through the beginner one because I find it really easy to follow. Um, and I get distracted easily and I'm amazed at how many times I do the 10 minutes and something has shifted for me. So I don't really know exactly what happens there, but I find it really helpful. And interestingly, since Corona hit, I haven't been doing it and I keep, it's on my like list every single day and I still am not doing it. And why am I not doing it? I don't know. And I can't answer that for you, but um, I know I should be doing it and I know I was better when I was doing it. So um, that's one thing that has dropped that I know really helps me. And then the other thing for me is it sounds really bizarre, but water and sleep, which we talked about a little bit in another episode. But when I'm drinking two liters of water, something is clearer in my brain <laughs> and I don't know what it is, but something is different. And so I'm really focusing on that at the moment and focusing on sleep because when I sleep better, I feel better the next day. And I had a terrible sleep last night. And so today I feel really foggy. So um, yeah, I know that mine will be different to other people because I'm managing an illness that, you know, impacts my body in a different way to most people. But those are the things that definitely help me. And when I'm not doing them, um, I definitely notice a difference. You heard it here first, folks. Two liters of water, you're going to think clearer than two liters of beer and whiskey. <laughs> Funny that. <laughs> what? Two liters, two liters of whiskey. Weird. <laughs> yeah, that, that's think great. Clearer. That's a, two liters of whiskey, yeah. <laughs> so before uh, SJ sheds all his wisdom on us, um, I asked people in the chat to put what, like, just put one thing that helps them. And, um, chocolate was uh kathy fisher was the very <laughs> first thing which is not a horrible idea yeah, yeah. no and, there's actually uh, uh like vitamin um not vitamin d what am i thinking uh, dark <laughs> chocolate uh is actually really good like there's something with the brain chemicals and something oh, um, yeah. that's as much as i know <laughs> so but it's really um, good you heard it yeah. here from dr streifler, <laughs> dr. That's, streifler. Because it, it, really... that's because it has the same chemical compound as alcohol <laughs> what i don't know chocolate. that's true dark, dark chocolate and oh yeah miro takes walks outside that's good and he's yeah. near killarney national park in ireland so i'm sure that's amazing yeah. and beautiful um let's see here meditation music changing your attitude that could be a little difficult but um a consistent <laughs> schedule john cooper has a consistent schedule and tries to get away from the house to do something and oxygenate himself and then uh couple different people saying exercise. Uh, John Williams is saying just like, even just to stand up and get off his ass and move around and lots of water, which as Sarah said, that was, that's a good one. That's a good reminder. And, uh, and he's also, John's trying to get more sleep. So we got a lot of the same kind of things. Everybody's on the right track. It sounds like SJ, why don't you straighten us up? Can I, can I say really one more a follow up to what I was saying about dark chocolate? Just so people <laughs> know I'm not Google making something? this up. Did you just Google something? Did you just Google it? <laughs> people who eat dark chocolate are less likely to be depressed. Eating dark chocolate can help reduce anxiety and improve symptoms of clinical depression. People who ate dark chocolate in two 24 hour periods had 70% 70 reduced odds of reporting depressive symptoms than those who Whoa. did not eat. So it's actually like clinical studies. So I'm not making this stuff up. My only recommendation with that is eat it in the morning because I know it sounds ridiculous, but the amount of caffeine in it really impacts my sleep. So have it in the morning and then you have a great day and a good sleep. I, I try <laughs> to eat dark chocolate every morning, per se. Every <laughs> Breakfast skip a, the champions. Skip a Hershey's bar right, right by me. <laughs> in bed. All right, SJ. Break it down. No, yes. Lots of you have covered off some of the some some really good stuff there right so tim talking about exercise it's a huge thing so your mind and your your physical body are so linked and i think people forget that a lot of the time but um it's true so um again clinical studies have shown if you do 20 minutes walk 20 minutes of running or an hour of walking a day it has the equivalent value of taking antidepressants it's that good you know wow getting out and actually enjoying the outdoors, taking in the scenery, letting your lungs do their work and um, getting yourself to work is it has a massive effect on your mental health. So body and mind are always linked. Sarah, you mentioned calm, which is one of 
you know, several really, really high profile apps that are available across Android, iOS, and everything else. Um, another one that I would say is Headspace. Um, I mentioned Headspace because they actually have a thing for people that are off work. So you can actually gain access to what would normally be their premium platform for free if you're off work at the moment because they want to make oh, sure wow. that you can ask their mental health, which is really great. That's really cool. So worth trying a few of them, I would recommend because everyone recommended Headspace and it just didn't work for me. But like that, Calm might not yeah. work for you, but Headspace might. So it's worth, they usually have free trials. So it's worth trying both, a few of them and seeing what settles. They're both guided meditations as well. So if you're like me and you originally thought that meditation was kind of sitting around and going, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, being really kind of hippy about it, then it can kind of put you off. So I actually think the word meditation puts a lot of people off. But if you think of it as just yeah. well, wellness and mindfulness, it's about being in the present rather than in the past or in the future. Um, and that's a really simple way to think about it. But it does have a, a massive positive effect on your mental health. So if you haven't tried those apps before, do give them a try. I've actually been curious about those. I don't understand. Like I'm not into that like empty your mind kind of meditation. It's I do like, not like that. I do like to like have affirmations or like thinking positively or focus, you know, the being mo present. Most of them are How does it work though? What are the guided, what's the guided element of them? So I think, um, the way that I've always described meditation, so a lot of people think it's that whole clear your mind, empty your mind thing. I wouldn't say that's what it is. If you imagine that you're in a busy bar, say you're in Coyote Ugly or somewhere like that, really, really busy, lots of people, right? And they're all trying to order drinks at the same time and you're trying to take about a thousand orders at once and you're never going to do it. I'd say mindfulness just puts everybody in a queue. So it's not about clearing your mind, it's about organizing it and making sense of it and letting go of the stuff that doesn't matter right now and keeping the stuff that does. So that's kind of where mindfulness takes you. And it's about when you focus on your body or you focus on the things around you, you stop thinking about all the anxiousness that you have about things that are in the future, all the guilt you have about things that are in the past, and you just focus on the present. And that can be massively calming overall to your mental health. So that's kind of what mindfulness or meditation is about. Yeah, I want to um, give, let me, let me jump in here real quick, SJ, before you go to your next thing, because I'm one that, like a lot of people, and even Sarah said here, that have struggled with, you know, obviously an entrepreneur's brain a lot of times is very hard to, to shut off and stuff and, yeah. and quiet people, yeah. pe people do think that the meditation is all oh, you got to be peaceful and stuff. And I have the calm app. I love it by the way. And I love the beginners one too, Sarah, maybe that says, something about <laughs> us. I don't know, but I will tell you this. I went to a counseling session for my mental health. Whew, when was it several months ago? And um, a few months ago, right before COVID and everything started, and I've always been interested in meditation. It's always been something that I've wanted to do. And everybody always told me, focus on your breath, focus, focus on this, focus on that. And I was just like, I can't effing focus on my breath. It was impossible. And for whatever reason, after this counseling session with this guy, he solved all of that for me with this. He said, David, I want you to go home every day and I want you to just breathe for 10 minutes. That's it. I want you to breathe. I don't care what you think about. I don't care what comes into your mind. It doesn't matter. Just sit still and breathe. And I will tell you what happened to me because I just listened to him and I said, okay, I can do that. I can just breathe. And I, I swear to you that my first week was like this. <sighs> I was sitting there <laughs> breathing, just breathing. And I had my watch, you know, and I got my timer set and I'm just breathing. And I will tell you what happened to me after just doing that, things started to slow down. I needed to just breathe first. And once I started to just breathe, things started to clear out naturally. It was kind of crazy. So if you're like Sarah and me and other people and you're just go breathe. 10 minutes a day. That's all it takes. Commit to it. Do it. And I promise you, your mind's going to slow down and you're going to be more in that meditative state that people talk about that you're thinking about. Sorry, actually, I don't mean to derail you. So. No, I think you've, you've just hit on something really important there. So I think like when, 
How many of us here have kids? We've all, I think everyone here has kids. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff doesn't. We, actually, I, am, we I just am a kid. Kids between us. Steph has a cat. I have a cat. Okay. So Tim, if you, Tim has a kid on the way. If you've got a toddler and they're having a tantrum or they're really kind of stressed or, you know, having a, an adverse effect being told no or whatever it is, you kind of calm them down. You get them into the present. You say, okay, breathe. And then you kind of encourage them to just take that moment to take that big and just get back in the moment, right? And then we somehow think that as adults, that doesn't apply to us anymore and that we don't have to do that to kind of get control of our emotions. But there are so many different breathing things that we can do. So my favorite one is, uh, so there's loads of different techniques um, that you can do. So there's, there's loads of different techniques that you can do, right? And my favorite is one called 7-Eleven breathing. So if you think about stress, anxiety, anger, all of those kind of what we consider negative, um, almost kind of aggressive emotions, they're linked to the part of our nervous system called fight or flight. That's what you often hear it referred to, right? Um, and that's kind of your reaction to danger. So back when we were cavemen, it was kind of if a crocodile come up, you know, you, you'd kind of, you'd run off. Or if, you know, a bigger caveman tried to beat you up, you'd kind of, you know, you'd choose to either stand your ground and, um, you know, protect your, your group or you'd run away. So it's all linked to that part of our brain. The part of the brain that, calms us down if you like once we're out of that danger is a thing called the parasympathetic nervous system or the rest and digest system and that kind of brings us back down to zero that takes us back down to zero so all of the things that we often think of these things as things outside of our control because they're not things that you can particularly have massive amounts of control over but we can control them so the fight or flight what happens? Your muscles tense, blood starts pumping, your heart starts racing, you start deciding what you're going to do. So the opposite of that is to get your heart slowed down, is to take a condor moment to really calm yourself down, is to take those deep breaths. So what David's talking there about is, is breathing. That's essentially all you really need to do to take yourself out of that moment of danger or anxiety and fear and bring yourself back to ground zero where you can really focus on where you are right now and the fact that you're safe and not worry about it. 7-Eleven breathing, all that means is, is breathing out for a lot longer than you breathe in, which is essentially how you calm yourself down. So if you took a count of seven in through your nose and then a count of 11 through your nose and mouth, you will find yourself in a more restful state. So Breathing is something we can control. That's something we can do and we can take, we can be mindful of and we can take control over that will take us from that fear, that anxiety, that worry that something bad's going to happen, that almost existential dread, if you like, and then bring us back down to actually we're okay. We're in a safe space. We've got a roof over our head. We're comfortable. We're warm. There's food in the fridge. We don't need to worry too much about our immediate danger. And it's hugely beneficial to our mental health to maintain ourselves in that state for as long as we can. Boom. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> Mic. <laughs> All right, show's I'm over. Just... And we're done. Yeah, I, I've been doing quite a bit of hiking here. You know, physical exercise is really good. And um, I don't know, just walking, you know, tends to, you know, along with the breathing and stuff, it tends to just be my calming, whatever, you know, not like SJ mega marathoning and all that stuff that he, he does at times. This is just a, a nice walk. I think being in nature for me, I've learned over time is something that's really important to my mental health. It, I notice that when I'm not out in nature, on a daily basis, I do, you know, I, I am affected and stuff. So for me, it's that. Yeah, I think some cool. of it is about working out where you're at and just taking a step forward from wherever you're at. So like, if you're already a runner and you're feeling a bit tense, then you could go for a longer run or a slower run or a faster run, or, you know, you can change that up. But if you're not doing any exercise, then going and sitting outside in a chair in the sun is gonna be a step forward. Or like me going for like at the end of my day, a 15 minute walk, I literally dawdle. Like I'm like, I'm walking with a toddler and that's okay because it's still getting outside. It's still breathing in. 
you know, or when I'm doing a 10 minute thing, like that was a, that was a step forward at the time and it was hard, but you know, if you start like David and just sit and breathe and look at your clock the whole time, or if you start with a guided meditation, you don't have to be like spending an hour doing some, whatever it is, but I think some of it is just working out what kind of personality do you have? Where are you at right now? And what is one step forward that you can take? And maybe don't try and implement everything all at once because we're terrible at trying to implement everything yeah. all at once. So we if are. if you kind of take, if one thing stands out for you, whether it's, okay, I'm just going to drink more water. Like, and that's all you do for the next month. And then after the month you go, okay, and now I'm going to add like a five minute walk outside or a sit in the sun or whatever it is. Then I think, you know, taking one step forward from wherever you're at um, it's going to make a difference. And that's really all we can do, right? Like we can't expect everything to change all at once because it never is going to. And we're only going to put ourselves in a worse position where we think we're failing because we tried to implement 500 things and we couldn't implement them. So we are a failure. Therefore, everything is stuffed. So, you know, maybe set stuffed. yourself up to win by just trying one thing that isn't too far from where you already are. This is kind of reminding me of our New Year's resolution conversation that we had. <laughs> this is a very similar kind of concept, right? Don't overshoot yeah, think, it. You know, it's funny, as I'm sitting here listening to all of y'all talk and thinking about my own and this corona and what I've put into place, I didn't intentionally set out to do these things but I realize now in listening to all of y'all and thinking about myself is that I did some things in, throughout my day to, and they're for my mental health. And I realize that now, you know, it's like- Chicken pot pie is good for the soul, baby. Hey, chicken pot <laughs> pie is good for the soul. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's funny because Sarah said, sit outside, you know. What I thought about was like, I'll change my work, you know, I'll go take my laptop, but I have a chair on my deck that I go sit in every freaking day, you know. I take a walk down to the park every day. I breathe, and I'm sitting here thinking, I do that because it makes me, it fills something up inside of me and it makes me feel better. You're a natural, David. No, I don't know. It's just mental health. Maybe, you know, I'm learning more about it the last couple of years for sure. Um, in my own personal life. So yeah, I, I mean, it's, I don't get outside enough and I have my office. You can't necessarily tell just from this screen here, but I have no windows up in Ugh. my office. It's awful. I hate it. So <laughs> I'm, I, it's like a cave. If I don't have the lights on, it is literally like pitch black in here. It's like, it's literally like what, Sarah's room looks like right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at, at any time of day. So I have to make a concerted effort to get sunshine to my brain because I, it, it isn't in here. And I was doing better at getting outside and taking walks. And um, I had a neighbor that we were just encouraging each other to get out and just go for like 10, like 10 15 minutes. I was at just around the neighborhood but it is so freaking hot here now. And it completely has derailed me. Like it just will take it all out of you. It's not relaxing, it's not fun. It's like you need gills to breathe in Charlotte, North Carolina at this time of year. It's I. It's like night in the 90s, like 95 degrees and humid. Ugh. For all of the rest of the world, I looked it up already. It's 35 degrees Celsius. Isn't it gross? <laughs> Isn't that gross? Yeah. It's so hot. That's so, nothing compared to, to here. here. <laughs> I think we're yeah. like Texas, <laughs> but it's yeah. so humid. The humidity is just yeah. insane. So it's just like, it's not, it's not a refreshing thing to go do that. I'll go sit out on the deck for a few minutes. Something I do try and go outside every day, but, uh, and on the weekends I've been, um, hanging my hammock out in the yard and like, we have a little wood line and so I'll just go hang my hammock and swing a little bit. But I, the exercise part is really lacking for me. And I've been, I've been feeling it. Like I've, I'm feeling way more tense uh, the, the like desk hunch is really getting to me. I've got this weird pain in my elbow now. Like I'm just at my desk too much because this is the other thing. It's now for my work, everything, you know, I don't even go to any client meetings and so, like all of us. Uh, it's also my church is on Zoom. Uh, if I hang out with my friends, it's on Zoom. So I'm at this desk all the time. And so like, it's even more important to get up and 
stretch and do all those things. And uh, I've been really thinking I need to get back into yoga because even though that's not outside, I used to do it quite a bit and I really enjoyed it. Sarah, have you ever tried? I don't know if any of you have, but I had some health problems several years ago where I couldn't do like physical exertion either. And I started doing just very mild yoga and it was amazing that the effect it had on me. So I was just thinking about you when I, when you're saying all that. There's, um, like, there's a really good, I didn't mention it before, but there's a really good free series on YouTube uh, from do you yoga and mm. it's all one word, do you yoga. Um, and Jessica Rose teaches it. It's beginners. They're under 15 minutes. They're really basic, but she's again, super down to earth. She's not all woo woo. Um, and I always feel better after I do that. So that's another that's... free one that anyone can access. It's on, um, you don't have to sign up for their subscription. You can just view it on YouTube. That's cool. I, oh, I yeah, also use a 30 day a... one. Yeah. They have a 30 day one. I looked at, I yeah, it's 30 the... days. And so you just do it every day, yeah. like, and it's different each day. And there's one that's even called, um, heal your tech neck. I think it is. So that would be perfect. Oh, for yourself, totally but be it's doing all that, about yeah. your shoulders and like getting your back, like your yeah. shoulders unhunched. So yeah. that's a really good one that I come back to a lot because I, I um, need it. <laughs> I like yoga. Amazing. That guy's pretty good too. He's kind of corny. He's really like, it's the same thing. Like it's not intimidating or high pressure or anything. Uh, yeah, nice. So that's another one. But so that's a, another way like on rainy days or when it's a million degrees outside or freezing cold, whatever it is, that's a way to get a little bit of exercise. Too All you people that, that live in insane heat, somebody who grew up in it in South Louisiana, you know, 100% humidity. That's humidity too, right down there. Yeah. Height. Come on out west. Ask Corey, Aww. you know. Tim, <laughs> come on out west. Because look, the high today. I mean, the hot days are like 80. And it's so You know what nice. they say. Yeah, I mean. It's we're not like, the heat. We're like 90 today, but it's like 10% humidity. And I mean, last week we were like in the 80s. And uh, um, so, yeah, humidity I've makes, only, makes a big difference. I've only been to Arizona yeah. one time, and I was super excited to feel that dry heat. It was in the summer. It was going to be really <laughs> hot. I was there for work. It It rained. It uh, rained when I was there. <laughs> Everyone literally got up from their desks and went to like go outside and feel it. I'm like, are you kidding me yeah. right now? And so <laughs> like, you hear like like once um, the you know monsoon starts, um, which is our rainy season. It'll rain like every day for like two months, and you're you're sick of the wow. rain. Um, and, and that's a little bit more northern Arizona, but uh, yeah, definitely could use some rain right now. Just yeah. come on out to the cool so, Pacific Northwest. I was going to say, you know, I mean, you know, some people do yoga, but but everybody has different different types of like mental issues. I mean, you have stress, yeah. you have depression. My my issue that I deal with and I've I've dealt with for a long time is is anxiety. And I've taken vitamin supplements. I refuse to personally take medication. I don't have anything against people that take medication, but I'm afraid of side effects and uh you know, cause I've, I've had some friends um, who have had bad experiences. Um, so for me, it's been like recognizing what's triggering my anxiety and anxiety can really easily snowball from like first thing in the morning. So it sounds weird. I mean, you know, I am somewhat obsessive compulsive and I'm a very neat, clean person, but I recognize that if I wake up in the morning and the house is a mess and the kids toys are everywhere, that first thing in the morning, you know, I'm tripping over a uh, tricycle or something like that. It starts like from that moment, like triggering my anxiety and it like snowballs throughout the day. So, um, you know, my wife gets mad at me because at night, like I'll sit there during dinner and just look at the floor and be like, okay, I got to sweep. I got to mop. But then she doesn't complain. Um, but I'll, Bro, I'll try, yeah, like, I was gonna say, like, like the, the kids will go to sleep and I'll sweep or I'll mop or I'll do something to pick up to where in the morning I, I feel better getting up. Yeah. And for me, that's one of those like weird things that just starts my day off as having like a a clean house, no dishes in the sink. My off, my desk is neat. And some people might think that's crazy, but for me, that's, that's something oh. I just notice what triggers it. Have you found that your anxiety has got better or worse since being on lockdown or, cause I, I guess you, you work from home most of the time anyway. Right. So since yeah, having it, home, well, how it, it's, like been, it's been hard to recognize. And I think just cause last year I was just such a, anxious mess with everything going on in my personal life and my mom and my kid and it was just like this big blur and uh, you know i mean every day i was on the brink of like having a 
having a breakdown and like just in this weird state where it's even hard to really think back on. So yeah, I think for me now, I, I just feel super blessed to be home. Um, my son's home. He's, he's, he's healthy for the time being. Yay. And um, yeah, you know, I, I, I definitely understand people are, are very much struggling with it, but for me, I'm like, cool. I'll, I'll hang out with my family all yeah. day and, and not go anywhere. <laughs> so yeah. We given kind of the, the groups of people that we work with now, and we work with a lot of other agencies that cover a whole group of people that suffer from various mental illnesses, from anxiety and depression to PTSD, bipolar disorder, loads of different things going on. Right. Um, we sat down once all of this kind of came to be and they said, right, we're going to lock everyone down. I don't know if it's the same in the US, but it's kind of similar where we, we were fully locked down. It was kind of don't leave your house unless you absolutely have to to buy food. And that was it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think everyone's kind of in a in a similar kind of situation. What we found was we were really kind of concerned. We were like, okay, is this going to be the straw that broke the camel's back for a lot of people? Is this going to be the thing that tips people over? And what we actually found was that the number of calls that we were getting through to the crisis hotlines and things like that actually lessened. And a lot of people sat there and were kind of like, well, does that make sense? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Does that just mean people are suffering in silence? So we started to call a few people just to get an idea of how they are. And a lot of our highly anxious clients um, had expressed, they were like, isn't it lovely that the world is seeing things through our lens right now? <laughs> yeah. this, is just, yeah. this, is, this is just how we experience the world. We're always worried that the worst is going to happen. Right now, the worst is happening and it's almost a relief. So we had all of these people that we were kind of worried about, but actually they were just really mellow and calm and we're just like in all honesty this has been happening in my brain for you know yeah. a good while now and, it's not, and, uh, and another weird thing is is uh you know if if i'm in an anxious state then i'll get social anxiety to where if my wife is like hey you know my friend's having a party and i'm yeah. not going to know anybody there i want you to meet her husband like i'll get anxious about that and so obviously with everything locked down you know we haven't been, been you're like anything. woohoo i didn't have to do anything <laughs> yeah <laughs> And that, I think, is the difference between there's, as you said, you've got extroverts, you've got introverts. So I think extroverts are really struggling during lockdown because they're like, give me someone to talk to. Whereas introverts <laughs> are like, finally, some peace. Yeah, and, and I've, I've, got, I've got my group of, you know, of people I talk to. I talk to David on a daily basis. And when we're struggling with something, we talk to each other. Um, you know, my wife and I talk as, as much as we can. <laughs> um, you know, and I have, I have my group of friends and family that, that I talk to. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, for me, it's it, for me, not, not really a whole lot's changed as far as that goes. I mean, you know, it, it's it, it's really not a whole lot different. So, I mean, the, the whole stay two meters away from people it actually plays into my character a bit better than normal <laughs> life. To, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I'm, I'm OK with it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm kind of a germaphobe as it is. So it's like, yeah. all right, you got to use hand sanitizer, which I've done for years, kept it in my truck like wash yeah. your hands like okay right. you know yeah it's like doing the whole oh no i've got to buy hand sanitizer like i haven't been stockpiling it for everything <laughs> yeah. oh, you were the one i, 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 I gotta wash my hands now Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's kind of concerning how many people weren't washing their hands until right. all this happened. Yeah. Like, or, or this is wiping, just wiping how I live my life. Down at the grocery store, I've always done that. Oh, and, yeah, uh, same. Always done. So it. great. And, I know. Uh, I love it. And people used to look at me kind of crazy because I, you know, go a little overboard on it. But uh, now it's good. And, it's like, it. and now it's like, oh, so now you want tips? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So what are the the benefits? Do you guys have any weird things that you do? Like little weird things? Like it makes me real happy. Like if I'm in kind of a blue mood or something, like if I like wearing fun socks or something like that, like some weird random little thing, like some people, they have to like get dressed for work to sit at their desk and feel more productive and things like that. I don't like that. I like to be comfy. I like to be in my jam, my gym jams or like, you know, my stretchy pants, whatever. But like sometimes just wearing like a goofy t-shirt that says good vibes or wearing like Argyle socks or something like that, that can just like, just a tiny little thing that shifts your environment. What do you do, David? For me, it's it's YouTube. So I'll stop. (laughs) There's some things that I I like enjoy. (laughs) Well, 
Your good vibes reminding me of it. Your good okay. vibes. There's a video. I'm going to tell you right now. If you have not seen it on YouTube, it will lighten your day. It just Google Mufasa good vibes. Okay. And we'll put it in the show notes. I, everybody. I promise you this thing will make you smile. You know, it's some guys looking at his friend. He's like, you ready to spread some good vibes? And he's like, good vibes. He's like, yeah, spread good vibes around the world, around. And then he gets out. He's just dancing. And I mean, I'm <laughs> yeah, telling that's, you. It will, singing it will and dancing is something that does live. Yeah. A lot of people so life. music is something for me that will definitely yeah. shift my my yeah, soul, music. My There's mind. some really great playlists on Spotify or whatever pla you know platform you want to listen yeah. to. But there's some. They're even called like mood boosters or like get your uh, yeah. day started right or whatever. And you know they they're I'm, always I'm, very helpful for me. I'm getting the link right now to post to our live people in the chat. In good, I'll a, do it. A good, a good playlist if you're interested is one called "Now That's What I Call Coronavirus." <laughs> it's, all, uh, it's all songs like don't stand so close to me and like stuff like that nice. <laughs> i'll right. try that one out today <laughs> all right, i think everybody. i think another thing that um is uh lacking in a lot of people's lives is something that is so simple but just a hug if you have family that you live with Give each other a hug. I was going to say, you can't do that. <laughs> I know. That's why, like, if you live alone, it's tough. But if you have family yeah. that you live with, give them a big, tight squeeze. Like, even that can be so energizing. And I think because we're so on guard about things, and even if we do see a friend out or a work colleague or something, we're, we're not shaking hands. We're not hugging. We're not doing any of the things we normally would. You know, we're not going to the bars and hooking up with randos all the time. You know what I mean, guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All, all like time. all the time. Not like usual, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but even something as simple as that, you know, like just be, and all of these things that we're talking about too, really isn't it a lot to do with just being alert to how you feel? And I, this is a good reminder for me, all of these tips, because I feel like I haven't been doing a good job of that. I ha like I said, I haven't been like crushed under the weight of it all, but I haven't been feeling like my best, my best self. I have been feeling stress and I've been feeling like I got to get out. Like I need a vacation. I need to go away. I need the ocean. Like when yeah. I start really, really craving the beach, I, I know that it's time for me to like, okay, I need to. I'm on to San Clemente. San Stephanie, like right there. <laughs> You've hit on something I think that is a positive that everyone can take from this, which is that we have really, if you haven't, then you've been doing something wrong. But I think everybody has learned what they can leave, what they can live without and what they really, really need. So yeah. if you can take nothing else away from this entire experience, except understanding a little bit more about what you actually need to be happy and whole and wholesome, and what actually you could live without and that you haven't missed at all. So for me, I was going maybe twice a week to the, the pub, to, to bars, because I felt like I needed that social kind of interactions. But actually, mm -hmm. I, I haven't missed that one single iota. I've not mm. missed it at all. Um, living with in close proximity to my children, their mum is a, a key worker. She's a midwife on a high risk ward. So she was actually totally distancing from the children. She wasn't allowed to see them or touch them or hug them or hold oh. them for, you know, six weeks to, wow. to oh, that's awful. watch them after that, be able to actually connect with each other again and then hold each other has just really, really solidified in my mind the stuff that's important and the stuff that isn't. So, um, you know, I'm thankful for that, if nothing else. Yeah, I've been having the big time envie to travel. Envie is the want, the need, the desire, <laughs> you know, to just travel, you know, to get, go camping. Well, yeah, you're not just an extrovert. You're a nomad. You're nomadic yeah, AF, uh, David. Nomadic <laughs> AF. <laughs> yeah, yeah, camp, yeah, camping for me has been nice. I mean, and it's one of the one of the few things we have been doing during the COVID crisis, uh, you know, we, we have a camper, we go out, we're, we're self-contained, um, you know, so you're not using like shared facilities and, and things like that. So there are safe ways. Unless you consider the woods your facilities, Ooh. in which case you're sharing them with everybody. With bears. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Bears. Do bears poop uh, in the woods? They do. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. Really? <laughs> 
I don't know. <laughs> I, I've seen a lot of bears, but yeah, they weren't, they weren't yeah. pooping. Uh, but yeah, for us, for us, that's been that's been nice. Just like you know, getting outdoors, getting the kids away from their uh, iPads and YouTube and and all that stuff. Because another thing that that I've considered as a parent is like we're going through all this stuff and we're talking about because we know how to express it. Our children who are home from school and not able to go hang out with their friends, go to a friend's house, are going through the same things we oh, are. But, but they don't such know how to verbally and they don't know how to verbally like verbally express it to us. So I try to be real considerate of that with my kids and understanding if they're acting out or they're upset, you know, that that they're going through the same stuff. That's amazing. What a good dad. Boom. Man, <laughs> this has been a great episode. You don't want to start some parting thoughts? <laughs> I don't know. SJ, have we forgotten anything? Have we left anything out? Got anything extra for well, us? I don't think we've left anything out. I would say that if there's one thing that you can do, it's to be kind to yourself um, in this times. Nobody has this nailed. Nobody knows exactly what you're supposed to be doing or how you're supposed to be handling this. So whether or not you're finding this easy and better than normal life, whether or not you're finding this harder and you just can't wait for it to be over, just bear in mind that um, I heard a phrase, I think it's really, really poignant, is that a lot of people have been saying we're in the same boat, but that's not the case. We're in the same storm, but we're all in different boats. So Aww. don't feel just because other people are handling this really well means you need to be too. Just you should put that on a pillow. <laughs> yeah. It's good. Yeah, just be kind and uh, yeah, this will all be over soon, I'm sure. Absolutely. Be kind to others, but I think really like we've got to all be kind to ourselves too. I think, you know, as entrepreneurs, as parents, as spouses, as whatever role we take, a lot of us have the similar trait that like we take it all on our shoulders, right? That's the kind of people that we sort of are all around like that's who we are and so when you do this and it's like you think oh okay well so we have to do everything on zoom or whatever well we've already been working from home or we've you know like oh this is nothing but there is a weight to what is happening in the world right now that is affecting everyone like where you go to the grocery store and do you guys feel this way like it's the grocery store and yeah you got to wear a mask or whatever you gotta say but like do you feel tense when you're at the grocery store like a normal menial task even has an elevated level of like just weirdness. And we see all these conflicting things in the news. Everybody in my Facebook feed is fighting about everything. I don't know about you guys. Like there's a, there is an elevated stress all over. And I think like we need to be kind to ourselves and to acknowledge that like these aren't normal times and we're all going through a thing and it's okay if you have a bad day or it's okay if you feel a little down, it's okay to do, to feel that way. And then to just like, do some of these little tips and things to try and pull yourself out. Or of course, if it doesn't get better to, you know, naturally to call one of those helplines or to see a professional. That was my final awesome. thought. I didn't realize it, but it is. Like I'm it. done. That, that was <laughs> Stephanie's. Who else has got a final thought? Anybody else want to final thought us? I think I've said uh, all of yeah, my sure. stuff in my normal thoughts. Yeah. I, I'm just going to say, just to reiterate, three things, no matter where you're at, like this is something that we can all benefit from. And that's more exercise, more sunshine and more dark chocolate. So. <laughs> Dude, you, forgot, you forgot more Mufasa. More Mufasa. More, right. There we go. More uh, more I want to bounce well. off uh, what Corey was saying. Like, I don't, I wouldn't, I would say I've got elements of little bits of anxiety, which I think we all do really, but I wouldn't say that that's a huge thing for me, but I would still say, that for me, cleaning up the house in the morning and having a really solid to-do list actually really helps my mental health. And I know it kind of sounds really stupid, but um, I noticed that when I actually have all the things out of my head that I need to do in an app or on paper or somewhere, and the house is tidy as I start the day, there's something different about the way my head is through the day. Um, and so for me, that's something I've learned about myself. For you, it might be something completely different, but I think there's something about being introspective enough to recognize, you know what, a to-do list really helps me, or you know what, cleaning up my desk helps me, or you know what, having a really messy house and being in my pajamas really helps me. Like whatever it is for you, that's okay. But um, I think taking the time to work out what clears your head. And for me, 
getting it all on to something is really helpful. Boom. Awesome. Agreed. Anybody else? Manan SJ, it has been awesome to have you back on Divi Chat, one of the original Divi Chatters. I'm 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 in Sarah's camp. What's it going to take to get SJ back? <laughs> chat on a regular basis. I don't know, guys. I think he's pretty needed. Sign the petition. <laughs> Can we get oh, a Divi week. call sign included in all the call signs? <laughs> I think we should. I think so. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, this has been a great episode. I sure hope that it's helped some people give you some ideas of what you can do to kind of, you know, help maintain your mental health during these uncertain times, as the title of the episode is. We had We've a few people break. in the chat saying that they, um, that Divi was there breathing and their little break. Divi chat, I mean, Divi was chat. their little yeah, break yeah. for the, ah, for the week, guys. which is like, I know, <laughs> I know. You guys need to get flattery, out. Oh, wait, you're not allowed. Flattery <laughs> will get you everywhere. Yeah. Flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> You know, in my group, we've started this little sort of informal Thursday night Zoom hangout, too, that is like, we just get on there and have some laughs and things like that. So if anybody wants to jump in on that with us or start one of your own, you know, get a few people that can have a little chat. It's fun. Sorry, I already said my final thought and I kept going. Sorry. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> All right, it. everybody. You've hit What's on something that? important there, Stephanie. Like it's being called social distancing, but really it's physical distancing. You can mm -hmm. still be social. You can still jump on Zoom. You can still jump on FaceTime or whatever it is. Just because you can't physically touch people doesn't mean that you can't still communicate. And, and Another maintain. nugget. Boom. Doesn't mean yeah. you can't Boom. mentally touch them. Oh, wait, that sounds weird. <laughs> wait. <laughs> Just make sure they're old enough. Just make sure they're old enough, Corey. <laughs> all right or you can we'll mentally see. touch me anytime you want <laughs> that is going in the best of Divi chat sound bites yeah <laughs> all right everybody we'll we will see y'all next week on thanks everybody week, for coming everybody. take care bye-bye take care